Hello, my merciful brothers and sisters. It is I, Mr. Mercy, coming at you with my very last uh, wrap-up for uh, E3 2017. I apologize this one has been so late. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, uh, problems um, both in and out of YouTube. Uh, if you guys watched my very last video, I, I mentioned about the whole thing with Alex Maurer and how that prevented me from doing a lot of stuff. Um, so, uh, the past few weeks have been a little bit crazy on this channel, but I will finally am, am now going to, uh, talk about the Nintendo E3 Spotlight, give my wrap-up for that, and after that, that'll be the last, uh, thing for, for E3 2017, um, even though it's almost going on, like, a full month after E3 at this point, but, but I figured it's better late than never. Um, so, let's get into Nintendo's E3 Spotlight, um, and see what, uh, it was all about. So, we first kicked it off with a year one sizzle reel for a Nintendo Switch. And it showed off, uh, some of ARMS, some, some of uh, Splatoon 2, some of Pokemon Tournament DX, some Rocket League, and FIFA 18. Uh, obviously it kind of spoiled the reveal later that we would be getting Rocket League on the Switch, but... Oh well. <laughs> um, and I, I love the more mature focused tone of the video, like there was no one under the age of 16 in that single reel, like at all. Most of the people they had in there were likely in their 20s. So, so that combined with the music really helped to show that the Switch was something that adults could enjoy uh, as well as kids. Um, that it's not just a, a little, you know, kid uh, machine. So. So that, so that was good. And the first real game that we got into showing off that, you know, wasn't just part of the sizzle reel was a story trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, now, the game, we uh, will see Rex and his new friend Pyra uh, on a journey to the paradise city known as Elysium. Uh, now, I have never personally been interested in a Xenoblade game before, um, but not only do the visuals look absolutely stunning and, and the characters just look so memorable and interesting the gameplay itself because they showed a little bit of, of the gameplay in there um not a lot but they showed a little bit of it it looks it looks really fun and interesting um now i know some people were afraid that the game would get delayed because it was a japanese game uh that needed to be localized and and that usually takes a long time to get through the localization process but hearing the English voice acting and seeing the menus in English uh, really uh, does give hope that it will, in fact, be out this year as promised, um, and there will not be any delays uh, due, to, due to localization. So that is good. Um, this isn't this isn't a game I'm gonna rush out to get on launch day, but I probably will pick this one up at some time. Uh, next, we went into the reveal trailer for Kirby, um, which is a working title, uh, and uh, there wasn't really much to see here in the trailer, um, except that the game looks like it will support uh, up to four-player co-op, um, whether that's, you know, across um, uh, multiple switches, or if it's like one switch with four controllers, or if it's two switches with, two control uh, with, with four controllers, we don't know. But it looks like it will support up to four-player co-op. Um, and it looks like a traditional Kirby platformer. So um, so that's really exciting for all the Kirby fans. I, myself, have never been a huge Kirby fan. Um, so this didn't really excite me all that much. But then we went into uh, what I have labeled here in my notes, since it's not really a game or anything, is uh, Takahashi's Relief. So Shinya Takahashi, uh, who works for Nintendo, came on to talk about how relieved everyone at Nintendo was that the Switch was, was doing so well and that people were accepting it. And this really shows that Nintendo is vulnerable and that the failure of the Wii U really hurt them, which, which um, showing that vulnerability, that's, that's good. That's, that's good to show that, uh, that, you know, Nintendo is not trying to sweep it under the rug and carry on as if nothing ever happened with the Wii U. Because uh, that key word, relieved, shows Nintendo just kind of went all in on the Switch as a bet and, and just hoped it would be a win for them, and it was. So they were really happy about that, and it, and it showed that, you know, that they're not a company that's going to, um, you know, distance themselves from their failures. Um, 
so so that was really a good little a little bit to include there. Normally, I would have railed on this for wasting time, uh, but but I think this was important to to show the fans that even Nintendo can can feel a bit hurt at times um, in in terms of their business. So so that was good to show. So then they actually got uh, uh, Sunikazu Ishihara from the Pokemon Company to come on um, and remind everyone that Pokemon Tournament Deluxe. Uh, will be coming to the Switch on September 22nd, um, and there will be new Pokemon uh, added to play as, including, uh, I believe they said Darkrai was one of them, um, and Polian, I think, was one of them, and, uh, of course, the new Gen 7 Pokemon, Decidueye. So, uh, so that's really, really exciting for the Pokemon fans, but you, ha you guys have to realize that up until this point, especially with the Pokemon Direct, that we had like a week before E3, um, and, and and the with the announcement of uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, because I was in one of the camps of people that said uh, that Switch would be getting a port of Pokemon Sun and Moon, um, even even if it's just like a third version, kind of like you know they did with with Emerald and with with Platinum back in the day. Um, you know, just a third, even just a third version coming to the Switch with improved graphics. I was, I was so on board with that. I was so sure that was going to happen. Um, whether it was called Pokemon Stars or not, it didn't really matter to me. I was so on board for, uh, Gen 7 Pokemon coming to the Switch. Um, and when they announced, uh, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon at, at the, at the Pokemon Direct. It broke my heart. Like, like it was, it was so devastating to me. And I thought, well, this is it. This is it. Pokemon, they just don't see the Switch as a system for a core Pokemon RPG. Um, and, and it's just going to be treated as a console. And they're going to put their console games onto it. You know, talking like, um, uh, like Pokemon XD and st like spinoff stuff like that. That you know, that's not a core Pokemon RPG. And that's how, just how they're going to view the Switch. They're just going to view it as a console and, and totally ignore the fact that it's a handheld. And that's just going to be it. And I thought Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon was going to be the, uh, the you know, the nail in the coffin to that to that idea of po core Pokemon ever coming to the Switch. So I was like, well, that's it. No, no, no core Pokemon on the Switch. But then when Ishihara said he had one more announcement, I got chills down my spine. And it was confirmed. A new core Pokemon RPG will be coming to Nintendo Switch. Ishihara said it would be more than a year off uh, from being officially revealed, um, but this this was just the highlight of the entire E3 week for me. Um, and, and, yeah. Because like I said, I had given up hope. I had given up hope that we would ever see a core Pokemon RPG on the Switch. Because I thought Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, that was the nail in the coffin. That killed it. That, that sent a message that uh, Game Freak only views uh, the, the handheld systems, like the 3DS, uh, as, you know, viable for core Pokemon. So, to hear Ishihara say that a new core Pokemon RPG is in development for Nintendo Switch. I don't care if it doesn't come out until 2025. Like, I am so relieved and and, 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 and happy to hear that this is coming to, to the Switch. Uh, you know, when it, when it happened live, I nearly cried. Like, I, 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 I got so emotional because this is my favorite Nintendo franchise. Um, more than Mario, you know, more than, uh, more than Bayonetta. Like, I love Pokemon. So... It, to hear that my favorite Nintendo franchise was finally getting a proper game on the Switch, it was just so unexpected and so overwhelmingly excited that it is my single favorite moment from E3. Um, and it wasn't stated about whether this would be another Journey in Alola or if it's going to be a Diamond and Pearl remake um, or if it's going to be have to wait until Gen 8. But we do know that it will have the same core gameplay you know, catch, train, battle, Pokemon that we're used to from the handheld games. Um, and that is all I care about. I don't care when it takes place. I don't care where it takes place. I don't care how long it takes to get made. I'm just happy that they're finally putting a core Pokemon on the Switch. So, after I've rambled on like about that for probably half the video here, um, let's move into the next thing. And this, oh boy, 
this was the big one. This was probably just as big, if not bigger, than the reveal of Beyond Good and Evil 2. And that announcement was for Metroid Prime 4. Uh, it was a teaser trailer for it. We didn't see a lot, but, you know, it, it's there. Metroid Prime 4. Now, I myself, I'm not a huge Metroid fan, but I have been kind of wanting to get into the series ever since Metroid Prime Hunters, First Hunt. Um, and Metroid Prime does look more interesting to me uh, than some of the other Metroid titles. So to see Metroid Prime 4 coming is huge. And I think Arlo did a really great video on why this simple title logo caused so much hype with Nintendo fans. So I think I will put an iCard up on screen right up there um, for you to go check that out. Because it's a really good video and explains why, you know, people are freaking out about this. Because a lot of people don't get it. A lot of people don't get why Nintendo fans just lost their shit. Like, for, the, for this announcement, when it's just a title of a game, and it says, now in development. So, I'll let Arlo explain that over in his video. Now, I think, personally, the, the big reason why I lost my shit at this announcement was that as we drew closer and closer to E3, there was less and less faith in the rumors that were circulating about two Metroid games uh, being in development. So when Nintendo basically confirmed it with, with this teaser and with another trailer they showed during their Treehouse event, which I'll get to later, um, it was huge. Like, 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 yes, it wasn't actually being developed by Retro Studios, we, as we later found out, but we do have some of the core people working on it from, you know, from the original Metroid games, uh, Metroid Prime games anyway. So, so it's, it, it's in good hands, it's just not being made by Retro Studios. Um... So this was a huge announcement, and and uh, I'm very happy to hear that Metroid Prime 4 is coming. And, and when it finally does drop, I probably will be picking it up. So then we went on to a reveal trailer that I'm pretty sure everybody kind of tuned out because they were still hyping, hyping up about the last trailer, um, or the last reveal, was Yoshi. It was a reveal trailer for that game. Um, and Yoshi is, of course, just a working title. Um, and it has kind of like a paper aesthetic to it, uh, similar to Paper Mario um, in a bit. And it looks like you'll be switching between... Uh, two different sides of a level, like like you'll have the one level that you're, that you're playing through um, normally, and then you can actually flip the level, and there'll be more to the level on the other side that you can play through. Um, and it's going to be like a 2.5D platformer. Um, so there's not a lot of details either, just kind of like the Kirby trailer, because these are both just like working title games that they don't really have really finished yet. But it does look slightly more interesting than Kirby, um, so I will have to wait uh, for more details before I make up my mind about whether I'm really into this or not. So then we moved into a story trailer for Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, now, the game will feature two siblings who must team up in order to defeat an evil dragon that has destroyed their home and killed their parents. Now, honestly, I think the, the part of the show that shows their mother uh, being killed kind of reminded me a hell of a lot of the opening episode for Attack on Titan, so it seems like they almost kind of just ripped that off. <laughs> um, but, uh, but nevertheless, that's, that's the story of the game. And of course, this, along the way, the siblings will encounter other notable Fire Emblem characters uh, that they can fight alongside. Now, this was another game that people feared would be caught up in localization and, and miss its deadline, but Nintendo is still staying firm on a Fall 2017 release, so we will have to see. And... Um, and, and the, uh, the voice acting in the trailer, of course, was still English, so, you know, that lends credence to the fact that they have their voice actors all ready to go. Um, so we'll see if, if Nintendo still meets their, their fall 2017 deadline. Um, moving in to some, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild announcements. We started out with, uh, DLC Pack 1, The Master Trials, which is available now. Um, it wasn't available at the time that E3 actually happened, obviously, but, but by the time I'm making this video, it's already out. Um, and DLC Pack 1, The Master Trials, which is out, like I said, is out now, it includes the Trial of the Sword, which is a new horde mode, uh, that starts, uh, Link off in basically nothing but his underwear, and you have to fight and gather gear as waves and waves of enemies attack you. Um, there's also Hero's Path mode, which, uh, shows the path that Link has taken, uh, throughout, uh, throughout Hyrule for up to 200 hours of your playtime uh, on your in-game map, which is kind of interesting. So it kind of lets you, I mean, it, obviously for people that just play Zelda, like, absolutely crazily and have more than 200 hours clocked in, it's not gonna, 
you know, register all of that, but, but, um, it'll, it'll show your last 200 hours, um, on the map and, and show where you've been so you can know where you haven't been yet and you can explore new stuff. Uh, and the pack al also includes various masks uh, and armor for Link to wear, including Majora's mask uh, and Minda's helmet, which is which is really cool, and a Tingle costume, which, which is also pretty sweet. And one of the most important additions in this category is the Korok mask, which will help you find Korok seeds much easier, uh, which is something that... Um, you know, I know fans have been trying to find those Korok seeds. I mean, some of them just looked up guides and did it anyway. But if, if you're having a hard time finding the Korok seeds, then then this Korok mask will, will help you find them. So that's interesting. And something that has fans really happy is Master Mode, uh, which makes the game much, much harder for people looking for a real challenge by boosting the levels of enemies by one and also giving them regenerating health. Uh, so that's going to be much, much harder to take these guys down, and I know that the fans who really wanted a real challenge in Breath of the Wild are going to be happy about that. So, uh, finally, for DLC Pack 1, there's the Travel Medallion, uh, which lets you register your current location as a spot for fast travel. Now, you can only have one of these spots on the map at a time, but if you, you know, find somewhere that you really uh, want to go back to at some point, um, you can set your Travel Medallion uh, for that location, Maybe go back into town, buy some supplies, and then immediately fast travel back if you want. So, so that helps with that. And they also announced the second DLC pack, uh, which will be the Champion's Ballad. Now, I have here in my notes that that, that it looks like a, it's a story where you presumably play as Princess Zelda, but in recent days, it's been confirmed that you actually will still be playing as Link um, in this. But it looks like Zelda is still going to be a primary focus of this story. And um, all four of Breath of the Wild's uh, Champions... Uh, will, you know, accompany uh, Princess Zelda in some way. Uh, and the DLC pack will also include a brand new dungeon, as well as more surprises when it launches this holiday. So, in addition to starring in DLC pack 2, The Champion's Ballad, all four Breath of the Wild champions will be getting their own amiibos, uh, which will be compatible with the base game as well as the DLC packs. Um, champion so, uh, then we moved into the uh, final announcements from Reggie, anyway. I mean, the conference was still kind of going on, but Reggie's final announcements um, were just to really remind everybody that Splatoon 2, ARMS, and Pokémon Tournament Deluxe uh, had tournaments going on at E3. And I'm not going to be covering the tournaments in this uh, wrap-up, but I will go over a little bit of what was talked about uh, in the treehouse at the end, so stay tuned for that. So then we went into kind of like a re-reveal for uh, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, um, and Eve Gimo from Ubisoft came on and talked a little bit more about it. Um, there was no new real information that was given, which we hadn't already seen in the Ubisoft conference, but I'm glad they did this for anyone who didn't watch the Ubisoft conference, because I know a lot of people, uh, when it comes to E3, really only ever care to watch what Nintendo's doing. So and they don't really care about any of the other conferences. So for anybody that missed the Ubisoft conference because of that reason, because they just don't care about the other conferences, this was a good way to show them the game that they may have missed the Ubisoft conference. Um, and then we went into the announcement trailer for Rocket League for Switch. Uh, and Psyonix, um is bringing Rocket League to Nintendo Switch, uh, which which is awesome for people like me who don't really care about FIFA but actually really like Ro Rocket League. Uh, and the game will feature exclusive cars, um, exclusive customization options, which included uh, special Mario and Luigi hats for your cars, and it will feature crossplay, of course, with Xbox One and PC versions of Rocket League. And maybe eventually PS4, if someone can actually pull their heads out of their ass and allow it, because uh, Psyonix has said recently, uh, after E3, that they can literally turn on crossplay. Uh, at any point, like right now, and within 10 minutes, PS4 players will be playing with Xbox One and PC players. Like, it's literally just a switch they have to flip on at any point, and suddenly the game is crossplay. Um, and the only thing that stopped them from making PS4 crossplay compatible um, is Sony's approval. So, come on, Sony. Uh, Minecraft, I can kind of understand because it's, you know, not allowing. Um, you know, kids to be harassed by people outside your platform. I can kind of understand that. Uh, and, you know, you don't want them being harassed and you not being able to do anything about that. I get that. But Rocket League? Really? Come on, man. But then we moved into the final 
game of the presentation, Super Mario Odyssey, the re uh, re uh, release date trailer. So, it mainly showed off Mario's ability to possess almost anything within the world, uh, including enemies, humans, animals, cars, and even inanimate objects, uh, with the help of Cappy, um, who you've probably seen in the previous trailers and stuff, with the cap with little eyes on it. Um, and he comes to Mario's aid after Bowser destroys his iconic hat. Uh, the trailer also showed us Mario's new ability to seamlessly transition between 2D and 3D Mario at certain points in the level. Um, and all of these new abilities and everything were covered more heavily in the treehouse after the presentation. Uh, but they really drove home the point that this is going to be unlike any Mario game you've ever played before. And I'm really glad that the whole Bowser and Peach wedding isn't just going to be some one-off plot point. Because um, I was worried that the main focus of the game was just going to be having an adventure with Mario. Exploring the many worlds in the game really just for fun or maybe just to collect some kind of MacGuffin to resolve a contrived ending or whatever. So I was pleasantly relieved to hear that the entire point of Mario going on this big odyssey is entirely, entirely related to him stopping the wedding between Bowser and Peach. And the wedding is really the driving force behind the entire game, so and that's just that's like just what I hoped it would be secretly. So I'm glad that that's the direction they're taking with it. And I also really like the detail of making the bosses in the game um, like just evil wedding planners uh, who have been instructed by Bowser to stop Mario from crashing the wedding at all costs. I just think that's a really really interesting and creative idea, and it really gives life to the game. Um, and not to brag, but I called it. <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey will not be launching in November or December, despite being previously labeled as a holiday 2017 release. It will, in fact, be coming out near the end of October to hopefully beat the rush of the other holiday 2017 releases, just as I predicted. Um, now, aside from Splatoon 2, which I'm probably going to beg my parents to let me get when it comes out in a couple weeks, uh, Super Mario Odyssey is my most anticipated game for the Switch um, that, you know, is coming out in a reasonable time. I mean, obviously, I'm hyped for, for Pokemon, and I'm hyped for Metroid Prime 4, but those are still off in development. I'm talking, come in the here and now, Super Mario Odyssey is my number one anticipated game uh, for the Switch. And just a little bit of extras that were revealed at the Treehouse. Um, the Super Mario Odyssey Amiibos were revealed. I have to have the Wedding Peach in my collection, absolutely. The only Amiibo I have right now is just regular Smash Brothers Peach. Um, but I really, really want that old Wedding Peach one uh, to have in my collection. And it was also revealed, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, a new 3DS Metroid game was announced, and that's Metroid Samus Returns. And it will be a 2.5D remake of Metroid 2 Return of Samus. So, guess we know why, why, uh, guess we know why AM2R was shut down now. Um, so, this is going to be a remake from the ground up. So there will be new abilities to mess around with. It's not just going to be a copy and paste uh, thing of, of Metroid 2. It's, it's literally, they've remade it from the ground up. Um, and it, while it has the same storyline and, you know, levels as, as the original Metroid 2, there's a whole lot of new stuff in there as well. So get excited for that. And they also revealed the uh, Samus and Metroid Amiibos uh, for that game. And the Metroid one is actually uh, squishy on the top, which is kind of interesting. But anyways, that was the Nintendo E3 Spotlight. Um, comparing it with the other conferences, I'm going to put it at my number one spot, number one of six, and giving it a, a letter grade of A. This conference was absolutely amazing. Um, like I mentioned in the Ubisoft, I believe it was the Ubisoft uh, conference, is that while there wasn't a, a high quantity of games that really got me excited. The quality of the announcements that they gave, especially with with Pokemon and Metroid Prime 4 and Super Mario Odyssey, um, you know, all, all of this stuff, and, and Rocket League to a lesser extent, you know, all of these things, you know, that they announced um, really had me really hyped, and it, and it brought out the biggest emotional response in me. Um... So, like I said, while Ubisoft had, you know, more abundant uh, announcements that I got excited about, Nintendo may have had fewer announcements that I got excited about, but I, for the ones that they did have, 
I got really excited for. Um, so it, it, it's it's quality versus quantity, and, and Nintendo definitely had that quality, and I think that that gave them the best presentation out of all of E3 this year. Um, I'm super, super stoked to uh, to play some more games on my Switch, um, and, and it looks like uh, 2017 throughout 2018 is going to be a great year for the Switch, and I can't wait to see what they do with it, especially now that there's rumors going around that possibly Bayonetta might be coming to the Switch, um, which would be the one Wii U game that I really, really just am dying to see ported to the Switch. Um, so... We'll see if that happens, but anyways, guys, that was my wrap-up for the Nintendo's E3 Spotlight. Remember, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I'm Mr. Mercy. Peace, everyone.